Hi, welcome to episode 159 of the Passionate Spinner podcast. My name is Tracy. You can find me as Schnüffelt here on Ravelry and Instagram. I do have a Ravelry group that I only use for posting links to the VKN, basically, at this point. Um, there is a channel on Discord that I will put a link to in the description box that is going to be valid for the next seven days. And I do have a Patreon as well that will I will also link to in the description box. And that is the whole shebang in the beginning. So I'm back again. It's only been a week, so I don't have a whole lot of stuff to show. But I don't mind. I'd rather record weekly with tiny episodes then not record for six weeks and then have an hour long one. So let's start. I have not finished anything since last week, so there's no knitting in the past. I only have knitting in the present and one for future. So let's start with knitting in the present. I have two things that I showed you last week and one new. So first up is this pair of socks from my husband. This is a German size 45, which is a very long sock. As you can see, there's, you know, very very long sock and it looks like this the yarn is from hobby it's their christmas color yarn they have six different ones and i bought all of them last year this is the label i am knitting these socks in theory with 72 stitches on us2 dpn's top down heel like a slip stitch heel flap gusset normal you know my usual recipe. So this sock here has 72 stitches. This sock here does not. I'm on the second sock. As you can see, I just knit the heel this morning. Now I am on 72 stitches, but the leg only has 68 stitches. And I realized that yesterday when I was about here, I was like, uh, mm, no, no, no. I will not rip back the whole leg of this sock. It's not going to happen. I don't want to. And... And I told my husband, was like, eh, I don't want to rip it back. So much work and na na na. And he's just like, just keep going. So I decided for the foot to go up to my usual 72. And I did that by doing less gusset decreases. And um, so what I did is when I cast on socks for me, I cast on my DPNs, so I cast on half the total stitch count on one needle and half on the other, and then I divide it up on four needles in my first round. For me, I need 64 stitches, so that's 32 and 32. For my husband, I need 72 stitches, so it's 36, 36. And I just counted to 32 like an autopilot, and then I did 36 on the other one. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it. I'm I'm not gonna care. I'm gonna put them on onto each other, and you can see that's the difference here. And it's only in the leg. The foot is going to have 72 stitches. So <laughs> this has never happened to me. I am close to 400 pairs of socks in my life, and I have never managed to cast on the wrong stitch count. Never. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, it's a thing now. So this is the second sock and I like them. I think they're going to be really pretty, you know, real festive and a bit different, <laughs> but I don't really mind. I'm using um, Lucke needles. They're the DPNs because I always knit on DPNs when I do socks and I really like the Lucke DPNs. Um, not the biggest fan of the interchangeables, but the DPNs I quite like. So this is a Christmas gift for my husband and I only need to knit the second foot and the toe and then it will be done. And uh, yeah, I, I, yesterday when I discovered this, I thought I was losing my mind because this has never happened. Not once has this happened. But, you know, there's a first time for everything, right? And it's not a big deal. Okay, so that's the socks. 
Now, the other thing you have already seen is the Mega Lara sweater. That is a, wait, let's talk project bags first. The socks live in this project bag that I made. The other one lives in this, uh, no idea what it's called, backpack thingy that my husband brought me back a lot of, a long time ago. And here's my sweater. And the yarn is falling apart, which makes things not easy. Can you see this mess here? I need to wind, rewind this, but I need to knit the um, cuff on the sleeve first. So this here is the Mega Lara sweater. It is a pattern by Shiny Superhero. She's a Danish designer. And I have finished the body. This needs to be seamed. You know, this is a, a flat knit right now. So I need to seam it up and I need to block it before I seam it. So here's the front and this whole puckery bit that will all block out in the end. So first, this is the front, that's the back. And I have finished the first sleeve. I lengthened the sleeve by four rows. What is this? Oh, okay. So I lengthened my sleeve by four rows because I just felt like I wanted to have it a tad bit longer. So this is the first sleeve. I snipped off everything but one, every ball of yarn but one that I'm going to use for the hem, the cuff, the cuff is the word. So this is a Intarja project. I have done a tutorial for how I knit Intarja and it's up on my Patreon if you're interested in seeing that. So that's the sweater. One sleeve to go. I really hope to finish this by next week because it's real fun. So the yarn I'm using, the main yarn, the gray, is a Schoppelwolle yarn. And I have no idea if I have a label for it. I do. So the main yarn is Schoppelwolle Alpaca Queen. This is the label. And it is a, what are you? 50 Merino, 50 Alpaca blend. That's the main yarn. And the other yarns are all hand spun. So I have this one here, which was my first hand spun out of a uh, where I used a hand dyed roving and it is from the Eclectic Sheep and it is a Corydale. Looks like this. It's called The Girl with the Pearl Earring after the Vermeer painting. This one here is 100% Merino. I'm not quite sure who's the dyer, but the colorway is called Pam and I'm pretty sure it's a True Blood inspired colorway. And the last color I'm using is a set of, of yarns that I made out of these bats. They were from Politically Incorrect Fibers. They are called Kensington and they were four small bats and I spun them all up differently and plied them differently. So for the... Um, for the back, I used the normal two ply. For the front, I used the chain ply. The first sleeve holds the single. And for the second sleeve, I have a bit of single left. And then I have this core spun, which is very thick. And I'm unsure if I actually want to put it in the sweater because of those thick bits. This is one of the first core spun yarns I ever made. Or if I'd rather look for a different leftover hand spun to use for the second sleeve because I don't think this will be very good in that sleeve you know because it's so very thick but that is it mega large sweater out of alpaca blend merino and beautiful hand spun intarja I love intarja which is good because in my next I mean I don't even know where what this is um <laughs> The next project I'm going to show to you is also Intarja. In theory, I'm not at the Intarja bit yet. So that's the Megalara sweater. 
and the last project does not have a project bag. So I started Tim's Christmas sweater. I brought the two magazines again that I'm using to make this. So the first one is, is <laughs> Simply Knitting issue 180. And I think I got this in 2018. And the other one is Knit Now issue 95. So for this, from this issue, I'm using this little pattern here for the penguin sweater. And I made the penguin sweater before for Tim and he loved it. And I'm using this for the basic construction of the sweater. And I'm going to show you a picture of how that sweater is supposed to look like. So this is this pattern here and I'm using it for the how to knit the sweater. And then I'm using the chart for this pattern here for the tree. Looks like this. But I will change the tree up to be more pointy and, you know, tree shaped and not just a triangle with spikes. Um, so that's the plan. What I've done so far is half the back piece. The yarn I'm using is from this pack here, which was from Aldi. <laughs> and I got this recently when I was invited. I'm not sure if invited is the right name, but um, I was invited to join someone in going to a, I don't know how to explain this. So let's start from the other end. Someone's aunt passed away and the, the aunt was a real crafter. She had a lot of fabric, like a lot of fabric and lots and lots of yarn. And um, someone here in my village um, heard of that and got in contact with that person and he was giving it away just to anyone who wanted it and everything we didn't pick up he would throw out so we went there um twice the first time we went there for all the fabric and we picked out all the good stuff and there was a lot of things that are you know just unusable things fabrics that are not really you can't really do anything with and we left all of those of course but i ended up picking up two large bags one for me one for my friend and the other, the next day we went back for yarn and I got a big box full of sock yarn. And I also got two packs of this yarn here, which is a yarn from Gründelwolle, which is a German um, yarn maker. And this yarn is called Bayon and it is a 35 um, wool, 35 alpaca, 30 acrylic blend. It looks like this. It's a worsted weight yarn and it's really nice to work with i have used this is the second ball i have 12 in total so i will not run out um i thought about not using this yarn for this sweater because i do have 12 balls which would be enough for a sweater for me but that would have meant i would have to go out and buy yarn for tim's sweater even though i have something that's perfect for it and that just didn't make sense so i'd rather have for me, just use it for a vest or make a scarf out of the leftovers, then have to go out and buy something new if I have stuff, you know? Very long story. <laughs> so this is the back. I incorporated this golden stripe at the bottom and I'm kind of, I did four rows of gray, then two gold and then six gray. And I think I should have done two gray, two gold, instead you know to keep it further uh, closer to the edge but it's, it's, yeah it is what it is now um this is the back i am close to the armhole shaping super easy relaxing just stuck in it you know nothing fancy about it so i'm going to show you all the other yarns i'm going to use let's go back to the chart so dark green is my gray the green here I will show you and what they have in red I will show you too. So the red, their red, the like the bottom bit of the tree. It's not the trunk, it's more like a flower pot where it's sat in. I will use these two sock yarns held together. This is leftover from my whatever sweater and Tim's socks. And this here I think is Sen Yarn Garden. 
I'm not sure. But I will hold these two together and also this glitter. Because it glitters, it's gold. I mean, this is not really gold, but it glitters. So it's perfect because Tim is all about the glitter right now. So these ones will become the flower pot at the bottom. Then I have this. I bought this in Italy. It is a cotton yarn with tiny sequins in it in all colors. And this is like a fingering weight yarn. It's this thick. So I will hold this together with this green hand dyed yarn that I got from a German indie dyer who's not um, selling anymore. She's just dyeing for herself. So I have these two for the tree. And I'm thinking about adding more beads to make it even more Christmas tree. -y. But I will only see that once I start, you know. So that's the tree. And then I will add something to the pattern. At the top of the tree, I will do a golden star. And for that, I have this yarn here, which is the worst thing I have ever worked with. <laughs> it's 100% plastic, of course. And it also, it feels so strange. I mean, it feels like a mixture of paper and wire. It's not nice to work with. I made those two rows here. And I already thought to myself, Bleh. but I, I used it because Tim loves gold and glitter. So I will add a golden glittery star at the top and embroider smaller golden stars all over the front. And that is this yarn here that I also got at that, um, I don't know what it's, I don't know the English word, Wohnungsauflösung. Um, <laughs> and this one actually, picked, Tim picked it up because for the yarn day, he was there with me and he picked up this yarn because he needs it. So I'm going to use it right away for his Christmas jumper, which is going to be hand wash either anyways. So I can put that in. So yeah, that's Tim's Christmas jumper. I really hope to finish this super quickly because he's so excited for it. You know, it's like, oh, have you started my sweater yet? Oh, how far are you on my sweater now? So yeah, I'm going to have to keep going and finish this quickly. So that's my current knitting projects. I have those three things. I'm focusing on those and then we will see. The other thing I have is for knitting in the future. And I'm not sure if I talked about my reindeer cardigan last time. I think I did. I have the yarn over there. I'm gonna go get it. So. I am quite sure I talked about how I wanted to knit the Christmas jumper uh, for myself. It is called the Reindeer Cardigan for Men. Uh, it's a pattern by Martin Story and it is supposed to be a cardigan for men. I'm going to change it. I have talked about this last time. So I showed you this yarn, which is the red, and I have found the perfect contrast, which is this yarn here. It is a slightly golden beigey yarn but I only have one skein, which isn't enough. And then I wrecked my brain and I raided my stash and looked through because I, I knew I had something similar. And I was right. I found this skein of Madeline Tosh. It's the Tosh Light in the parchment colorway. And these two are very similar. So I will use this as my main color and I will alternate these two every row. Um, because it's knit in the round, the whole thing. So I can alternate every row and not do two because I don't have to get back. This is going to happen after Tim's Christmas sweater is finished because I can only make one Christmas sweater at a time. <laughs> so this is a go. And I have another thing that I'm going to start and it is another Martin story pattern, I think. It is. I really love his patterns. And this one here is also a free pattern. The Reindeer Cardigan is a free pattern download from the Rowan web website. You can also find it on Ravelry. Now, 
let's talk about this one in a second here. Ah, oh, okay. This one here is called Skipness. It is a beautiful cabled cropped cardigan. It is also a free pattern from the Rowan website. And I will make this for myself. They use Rowan cashmere tweed, which I think costs 10 euros a skein. I looked it up. <laughs> and for my size, I would need 15 skeins. That's not going to happen. So I talked about the price. I'm, I will talk about prices of things when they are finished. I think that's the easiest thing. So what I will use instead is this yarn here that I had started a vintage blousey top with. I still like the top and I still want to make it, but not out of a sock yarn. I want to make it out of a more summery yarn. So this one became available to me and I have three skeins of that. And I bought those at the Coats factory outlet shop. They are actually Red Heart sock and they were four euros a skein. So I have three of those. And then I thought to myself, ooh, the sweater is knit out of a DK weight. Um, what if I do this yellow, the yellow? And pair it with a mohair. That would be wonderful. It will make a really nice and warm sweater. And if you knit it slightly denser than you would normally with mohair, the cables are still going to really pop. And then I look through my box of mohair because I have one box of mohair yarn. And at the bottom, under everything else, I found six skeins of this. This is a golden yellowy um, mohair. It is the Drops Silk. Kit Silk, and it's a, what is it? What are you? 75% mohair and 25% silk. And I have six of these, which gives me the exact same meterage for these as I have with those. And yes, the colors are not the same, but once I knit them up, they will become one and it will be very pretty. So this will be for me, my next cast on because I do need more um, solid colored things in my wardrobe because I have so many patterned skirts and dresses and just things. So I need more solid stuff. And that's that. That's what I want to start for myself. I will start this one for me soonish. I I wanted to have already cast it on, but I haven't found the time yet. So that's going to happen. And the reindeer card again. Good. So that is the knitting. For new stuff, I have one thing that I can't really show you anything of, but I got myself an advent calendar and it re I received it this week. It's a fiber advent calendar from a Austrian dyer. Uh, and I got the BFL mix whatever 10 gram minis and I will pop it up on this wall here later today because I do not want to have these little packets of fiber upstairs where the cats are so this is going to be in here and yeah like I said I can't show it to you because it's 24 little packages what what can you see there but I do have spinning which is exciting <laughs> last week I kind of felt the urge to film a tutorial for my Patreon for how to do ply on the fly. Why I felt that urge is kind of a mystery to me because I don't spin ply on the fly very often because I don't use spindles all that often. And if I do, I don't do ply on the fly. I've done it before. I know how to do it. You know, it's not like I've never done this and decided to film a tutorial. Um, I've done it before, I know how to do it, and I actually enjoy it. <laughs> so I grabbed my spindle bag, I made this myself, and I grabbed some little fibery bumpies. They look like this. They were also from a fiber advent calendar that I got a few years ago from Bakewell Hearts. And I just, yeah, grabbed that stuff, grabbed a spindle. This one here, it is a Buckeye Burl spindle from 3G Woodworks on Etsy. 
and I went for a walk. It was in the morning, we had two degrees, it was very cold outside, but sunny, beautiful weather, actually. I like that a lot. And I did my tutorial out in the wild. And I have since then gone out again for a walk. And I finished spinning two of those little bumps. And when you do ply on the fly, you spin your fiber and then you immediately ply it into a three ply Navajo ply yarn. So this is what this is. And I initially wanted to spin one of those little bumps a day, but I didn't spin anything yesterday. I did go for a walk and I brought my spindle, but I just didn't stop to spin. The same today, I went out for my walk and brought my spindle and my tripod and everything and then I just didn't. So this is gonna take as long as it's gonna take. I don't know, but it's a lot of fun. And if you have never done Ply on a Fly and you're looking for a tutorial, I have one up on my Patreon, so you can check it out there. So that's the spinning and that is also it. Um, for reading, listening, watching, I have, I am listening to Stormfront, no, not Stormfront, Full Moon, I think is Full Moon is the second book in the Dresden Files and I'm not sure if I like it. So I will finish the second book and then decide if I want to continue in the series or not. For watching, I'm still watching the Chicago franchise. PD is still my favorite and I haven't watched anything else. Um, no other, oh, I do have one other craft. Hoo -hoo. I almost forgot. So last week, I think it was on Friday, Tim was sitting down to do homework and I decided to sit down next to him so he's not, you know, alone and I can kind of keep him going because otherwise homework is going to take forever. And I just felt the urge to try watercolor and I have bought myself a 12 watercolor mini set thing, which is like this big. Um, and I just decided to just go for it. I've seen a lot of small videos over on um, Pinterest and on Instagram and stuff. So I just, I just went for it. I've never done watercolor before. I have absolutely no idea how to actually do it and what to take into consideration. But I sat down and I made this pumpkin. It's my first ever watercolor, so please be nice. I know this cat could be a lot better, but I also think for the very first try, it could be a lot worse. So, uh, yeah, it's the first time I did this. I will do it more often. I really want to. I want to learn how to actually do it. And yeah, so I made a watercolor painting, which was a lot of fun. And that is it for other crafts. Now, the last thing I have is everything else. Um, I wanted to talk quickly about mental health changes in general, because I had a revelation this week. I have been, you know, I, I tried this watercolor without knowing anything, without any pressure on myself. And half a year ago, I wouldn't have dared to do it because everything I want to do, I want to make perfect. And I let go of that in the last few months, that inner need for perfectionism or yeah, of striving to be perfect because perfection is a myth. I think it's never, never there. And I've been learning a lot this year because I have dealt with anxiety and, you know, in the disorder version, not the normal version for 25 years and I didn't know that it's an actual thing and that it has a lot of physical symptoms that go with it until this year, I think. And I've learned a lot since then, since learning that anxiety is an actual thing. I learned a lot about myself, about how I, how I behave, why I behave in the way I behave, you know? And I learned also that I spent so much time trying to be someone that will fit in every box that other people have made for me. And 
I tried so hard to be to be liked by everybody. I was a, such a people people pleaser and I've let go of all of that because I realized that I'm not quite sure who I actually am and who I actually want to be. And I'm starting to learn that now. You know, I felt I had that urge to belong. I wanted to belong so desperately. So I would need in this community. Let's talk about this community because this is why we're here. I would knit the things that everybody knit because I wanted to belong, you know, and when you cast on something that 5,000 other people are knitting, you have that sense of belonging to that group of people. And I kind of let go of that. And I think my choice of projects and yarns reflects that a little bit. I started to just do what felt good for me without caring about what other people think. And I really like that. So <laughs> I often get people who are like, who are very worried about me because I'm so sad all the time. And so, hmm, and it's not actually true. I'm not sad. I'm worried because I have anxiety. I don't have depression at all. I love life. I'm so happy to be here. I just, I love everything, you know, but I worry all the time about all, all the things. And that can bring me down. And I have come so far. And the thing is, when I have a bad day, which is normal, because everybody has a bad day, my anxiety keeps this whole thing. You know, it starts this little spring in my head that will wind up and then spring up. And then I have this spiral that I go down. And I have when I have a bad day, I feel like I've made no progress and... You know, everything just sucks and eh. and then I have a worse day after that because I talked myself into that day being even worse. And then I come out of it and I'm like, you know what? Wasn't actually that bad. I'm happy. I actually really am happy. For the first time in a long time, I can say I am happy. And I am finally finding out who I actually am without trying to be someone that people want me to be. And that's a pretty good feeling. And I'm glad that I arrived at this point. And I just wanted to share that because it makes me happy, which is a good thing. And uh, yeah, that is it for today. Over half an hour. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to do these shorter, but it doesn't matter. I am I'm back. I hope to do this every week now. I really want to do it every Monday and show you my my crafting you know, and if you're interested in seeing even more of my crafting and my baking and find recipes and tutorials and stuff, go over and check out my Patreon. I have a link in the description box and I will start a beginner spinner series this week. It will be a six course class, six class course, six part course um, on how to spin on a spinning wheel. And... I'm going to put a lot of work into that. And if you are interested, please go over, check that out. I um, My Patreon is a pay what you can model. I think that's what people call it. Um, basically, uh, for every tier. So B Patreon is based on tiers, you know. you the, the smallest tier will give you the least amount of content. The highest tier will give you the most amount of content. That is how it usually is. For me, lowest tier, all of the content. Highest tier, all of the content. There's no difference in content. There's only a difference in how much you can contribute. I think it's the right word. So, yeah. Now, I will stop. I hope you all have a wonderful time. I will hopefully see you again next Monday. Check out the Patreon and... I hope you are as happy as I am and I hope you enjoy everything you do. Bye.